Let's break down today's action with our first guest. Joining us now is David Bonson from the Bonson Group. Welcome. David, you got your eye on dividend payers and energy stocks, giving these geopolitical tensions we're seeing? No, yeah, very I, much I, so. And I think that the I think that the reality today was that the market was up 300 points with bond yields up big. And then it went down over 200 points with yields still up, which really indicates an intraday volatility that is far more likely related to the geopolitical tensions. We very much believe dividend growth because of its embedded focus on quality, value, different types of balance sheets, different types of debt ratios that kind of speak to higher quality companies. And then as as you mentioned, the energy side, we have some good, great dividend growth names that happen to be in the energy sector, therefore perhaps correlated to some of the geopolitical tensions in a positive way. Yeah. David, I wonder how you see it, especially where the Fed is concerned, because the way I see it, it's essentially like a Venn diagram. You have geopolitics, you have inflation, you have the Fed sort of sitting in the middle because we know geopolitics, A, breeds uncertainty, and B, historically, can be very inflationary. Look no for further than industrial metals, aluminum and nickel today, also tied to geopolitical dynamics, specifically more sanctions on Russia and trading of those metals as they come out of Russia. How does this now potentially factor in when we do see these rising risks in the Middle East and elsewhere, how does this factor into the Fed's calculus and thus impact to the market? Can we even possibly begin to game that out yet? No, you cannot. And the reason why is that there are so many moving parts. It's incalculable. And we're also talking about the difference between the optics of what the Fed does and the underlying decision making. Those things involving commodity prices that are not related to monetary policy, that are extrinsic in some of their supply demand factors, as well as just, as you said, geopolitical heat. Uh, the Fed funds rate doesn't affect Middle East geopolitical, you know, weekend tensions. These things are somewhat permanent circumstances. And so I think the Fed is primarily focused uh, deep down in places they can't talk about at parties on the fact that there's a maturity wall of debt coming in commercial real estate, corporate debt. They've gotten a huge free ride for a couple of years, high rates that nobody's really actually paying. And I think that ultimately the inflation data will show what it's going to show. But the Fed cannot let those moments happen where I would somewhat disagree with with my colleague here on on air is I think that the terminal rate of Fed funds is never going to go back to the zero bound, which he's agreeing with, but I don't think they can let it go higher because the Fed ultimately is in an accord with the Treasury Department that the federal government cannot afford the debt that's been put on. And this new level of debt and growing deficits was not new after COVID. It had been going on for 15 years before COVID with declining rate environment. Ultimately, the Fed is trying to manage a bunch of things at once that it really can't do other than praying it gets lucky. Okay. David, thanks for kicking off the hour with us.